Good afternoon. I am Jung Woo Jun, professor at Tangguk University, and I will talk about the story of COVID-19 and Seoul city branding. I am highly interested in country branding and studied brands related to countries and regions. I have been studying everything that can be branded. Today I'm going to talk about the city branding, and also the relationship of city branding and COVID-19. There are academic studies included in my uh, speech, like charts and statistics, but I will try to use layman's jargon. I believe that you are familiar with the term brand. It's also used as the term trademark, but how are they different? Generally, they're not much different, but brand compared to trademark has a much more complex meaning. A brand is centered on the identity of a company. It's a strategic expression of a company or a product. The most accessible form would be a visual symbol inherent with various meanings. To compare a brand with an iceberg, there is more below the water than at the tip, which means there is more to a brand than what is visual. Brands can be applied to not only companies, but also many other things. For example, celebrities, politicians, athletic, athletes, CEOs, so people, government agencies, public organizations, so government, country, city, including the city itself, district, town, and villages. So it can be applied to many areas. Recently, the public sector has been highly interested in the brand and has been emphasizing on its importance. Before talking about city branding, let's take a deeper look at brand itself. First of all, let me explain the term local brand. So, brand is, uh, local brand is approaching a region as a brand. Within it is the country brand that includes the city brand. In addition, we have a smaller community brand as well. In tourism, they use the concept destination brand. And as previously mentioned in uh, presentations, it focuses on a place as a travel destination, so it's a special form of a local brand. So the local brand includes the country brand and city brand. Branding a country or a region can help us expand into the area of public diplomacy. There was a journal called Place Branding that published articles on place branding. And it has renamed itself as Place Branding and Public Diplomacy to include the concept of public diplomacy, which means that other than building a brand asset, it includes a lot of different meaning. Let me move on to the country brand. Country brand is an approach that sees the country as a brand. It's the most studied area in the field of local brands. In the previous administration, there was the Presidential Council on, on Nation, Nation Branding and made a lot of efforts to manage the country's image. And the, a lot of studies followed. It's not easy to explain the country as a brand because it's a humongous entity. It's so hard to explain the country as one identity. 
So in the discussion of country brand, people tend to focus on the visual identity as a means of communication because of this re reason. One leading example of the visual symbol of a country could be the flag. And governments also use, and agencies also use different symbols. Until now, Korea's visual identity has been changing constantly, and depending on the administration, it has been used in different ways. When you look at this table, we have a separated brand for the country and tourism. There were many changes. In fact, this is not that desirable because it's difficult to build a country brand if you have set one strategy, you need consistency in maintaining it and also in communication. Changing a symbol does not really mean you have a different identity. Between dynamic Korea and creative Korea, you may have preferences. But in my opinion, Korea, of course we want to be creative, but it's a country where people work hard and play hard. It's a dynamic country. So to build and manage a country brand asset, we need to first come up with an identity and set the main channel of communication and manage it in a strategic manner in the long run. We also have the city brand. Just like countries, cities can be branded. The city brand is closely related to the country brand because you cannot visit a country without visiting a city. So in terms of brand hierarchy, we need to manage the brand in an integrated manner with an organic coordination between the country brand and city brand. And we also need to have a portfolio management of different city brands under the country brand. So if we say the country is the mother brand, the city would be the product brand, a sub-brand. So a sub-brand portfolio is strategically very important. Seoul is a large single city, and Gyeonggi province is a collection of different cities. So their brand hierarchy and portfolio would be different. So they need different approaches and strategies. The mother brand of the country affects the city brand, but reversely, the city could have a positive impact on the country brand. So we can explain this as a spillover, mutual spillover. As you see in this pie chart, taking Korea as an example, some cities share a lot of uh, common factors with the country. And there are cities that have differences, so we have many different city brands. The most important thing is we need to share the positivities of the mother brand and also build the unique original brand asset for the city. Let's talk about the city brand logo. I would like to introduce one paper which is written by me. So visual symbols are the leading forms of brand and this slide shows differences in countries. It's a study on the brand design, city brand design for Korea and Japan. Can you see the difference? So when you look at the results, in Korea, municipalities have been making efforts to build a city brand for years. So when you look at Korea's city brands, the logo is more colorful compared to Japan. It can be flamboyant and loud. And Korea likes bright colors, strong colors. And in terms of designing the city name, Korea uses word marks often. 
In terms of speech, this is closer to direct speech. Let's take a look at Japan's logos. Their logos are symmetrical and balanced. In terms of the color palette, they like neutral colors, leaving a soft image. You know the character Hello Kitty? Japanese prefer pastel colors. Now let's talk about the city brand of Seoul. There are a lot of factors impacting the city brand, including competence and image. Building the best way to, the most universal way to build the brand is advertisement, but there are also alternative communication channels. Just like product brands, the perception of the consumer is the key factor, so we need to leave a certain expression for the city. According to studies, in the case of New York and London, the musical industry of the city can impact its brand. And we had the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics in Korea. Pyeongchang was able to build a positive city image thanks to the Olympics, which was the same with the case of the Seoul Olympics in the past. Seoul became a global city thanks to the event. Not only large events like the Olympics, which is hard to host, small local events can also influence the building of a city brand. There are many examples, such as film festivals and horticulture fairs. Seoul has a unique position. From the perspective of non-Koreans, it's hard to differentiate, distinguish the Korea country brand with the Seoul city brand, but it's a competent city with a unique branding. So it's being positively influenced by the country brand and at the same time building its unique brand. And Seoul has been utilizing a lot of characters and brand slogans. Managing the visual communication and competency are all important factors for maintaining a strong city brand. Now these days, people talk about COVID all the time. That has been hitting cities and countries very hard. And nowadays, response to COVID is seen as an important factor for countries' competitiveness. In the case of Europe, the central and local cities clash because of this response. And with the prolonged COVID crisis, people's perception of its danger and seriousness has been increasing. According to studies on MERS, the usage of media impacts confidence on government and this in turn strengthens the risk perception of an infectious, infectious disease, which are very important concepts. These indicators show that there are differences in the perception of a country on COVID, which also impacts country's image. So let me introduce one quantitative study. It looked at Korea, the US, and China and conducted a survey on the perception of COVID. And Chinese took the danger of COVID most seriously, followed by Korea and the U.S. And regarding the perception of seriousness, there's no much, not much difference between Korea and China, which are larger than that of the U.S. So this explains people's tendency to wear masks. Let's take a look at COVID-19 and, and the city brand. Countries have been reevaluated based on its response to COVID, and even advanced countries have been suffering in the response. In the case of Korea, thanks to strong control measures, we've been minimizing the number of daily infected patients, garnering positive evaluation worldwide.
So to look at the relationship between COVID and the image of a country or cities, I conducted a research on Chinese, a survey on Korea and the city of Seoul. I chose China for this survey because it was the first country to experience COVID-19, and it's one of the largest market for the brand of Korea and Seoul. There were 223 respondents, 77 male and 146 females, and the age ranged from 18 to 65, and the average age was 26.2. So I used the hierarchical regression, and health involvement had a positive impact on the attitude toward Korea. To explain in layman's words, people who are more sensitive to health or have a positive attitude to Korea, and also the government confidence on the government has an influence. The city of Seoul has been proactively responding to COVID-19, which has a positive impact on its brand. Managing the COVID situation in a city with a population of 10 million is very difficult and meaningful, and it could be utilized effectively in building a city's brand because it's rare to find in the world. So I used the intention to visit to analyze the attitude toward the city. Health involvement and confidence toward the Korean government impacted the attitude towards Seoul. And on the intention to visit Seoul, health involvement and seriousness perception had an impact. So people who take corona seriously and are sensitive to health have a higher tendency and intention to visit Seoul, which means that uh, the city's image in responding to COVID has a, an influence on the city's overall image and the country. So city brand is related to urban planning, marketing, advertising, and tourism. And the city brands hold different aspects, uh, practical aspects and emotional aspects. So you need to encompass both of them in your brand strategy. The symbols and visual icons can be a way of emotional communication, and city's competence can be related to the practical side of the brand. So responding to COVID could be an important factor in determining the competitiveness of a city. When you look at the past examples of companies, overcoming a crisis effectively contributed to building a brand asset. The important thing is we need a consistent brand strategy that goes beyond one term of the mayor or an administration. We need a long-term strategy to build and maintain the, the brand. These days, it's uh, movement is limited, so we need emotional communication with the consumers in terms of promoting our competitiveness and achievements of the city. When you look at media articles of Korea, uh, there are a lot of exchanges and cooperation between small cities to strengthen the competitiveness of a city, to build a mega city. It's not easy, but it's all part of the efforts to reinforce a city's competitiveness. The current crisis can be a crisis and an opportunity to individual cities. Small cities that were not known can make a great impression in this crisis, and Seoul needs to continuously communicate its substantial competitiveness and maintain its image. Thank you very much for listening.